Okay. Right. Recording in progress, right. A good one today. Me, yeah, Donald, yeah. George, and the mighty John Cochran. State yeah. quo. Fantastic. Happy birthday yeah. for yesterday. Yeah, Thank you. Right. you. Have a good time, John. It was good, yes. We got to, because I was down in Bognor, and we stayed over. Then we got, uh, then uh, Glenn, my driver, drove me back home. Then um, went, got, got back home, got changed straight out again to the village, and friends of ours uh, held a barbecue, steak barbecue. So I had that, came back, got changed again, and went out to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I was completely knackered. I, I, yeah. I saw there were quite a few things on uh, Facebook for you, weren't there, where people wishing your birthday. Same as yours, Don, the other day. But yeah. there's a co yeah. couple of slave blokes, uh, Simon Harvey and uh, Nomis, but you know Nomis? Oh, no. So Simon Bowley, they they both. I, I don't know, know he, 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 he was always around. You know, I was always yeah, around. Yeah. was. Right. Yes. Yeah. The main topic today is going to be the status quo slave to a uh, uh, May seventy two. Um, were you aware? How aware of you of each other? I mean, you obviously knew each other, but you never gigged together before, did you? I think oh, I we did. If, if I remember right, John, we did we do a gig at a college in Hereford before that? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, it's just we it's just trying to remember. I think that was I think that was the first time we met John was this college because I remember That's right. I don't know whether it was Rick or Fran because hot pants were the thing then. That, that was <laughs> it. and uh, some of the some of the girls in the gig I got uh, hot pants on. I know it was Rick Rick or Fran. You know he called them the Hereford hots. Yes, but, it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, but I, I can't I can't remember whether it was Rick or Fran, uh, uh, John. Yeah, but uh, yeah. but that was I'll tell you what, and that that term has stuck with us ever since. <laughs> the Hereford yeah, the, there was a, yeah, there was definitely the Hereford Hots. That was so funny. They every gig they turn up with just hot pants on. Of course, I don't, know, I don't know why everyone got so excited because they they were quite <laughs> ugly um, hot pants. Really, the girls were lovely, but the hot pants are crap. <laughs> yeah. But well, I remember that was the first. I remember that was the first time we met John, and yeah. then and then it was Mal. I think it was Mal Bush. I think it was Mal Bush who came up with the idea of us doing that uh, tour together in seventy uh, two. You know, I think it was Mal Bush who was doing well, that. It, was, it, it must yeah. have been a, a good thing for you, to John, to do it because you you were. I mean, Slade were hitting the things with the charts. Then they they were going mad. Slade alive. Uh, in life, was, and there was uh, the singles, but status quo weren't really doing anything record wise, were they? You took your gigging all over the place, but there was no sort of after the initial charge thing in the 60s, no, you'd sort of plateaued out a bit, hadn't you? But what happened, it was Bob Young who was um, our initially our roadie, then he became tour manager and he, he wrote songs and played harmonica in the band, but he was. Um, it was this idea, because once you stop doing Top of the Pops in those days, somehow, you know, we didn't get any gigs, and it was quite strange. And Bob said, look, let's drop this ridiculous image, get rid of those stupid shirts and those horrible trousers, and, you know, grow your hair long, wear T-shirts and jeans, and go and play colleges and universities. And it changed it all around. We brought out In My Chair, which was about smoking dope, really. And um, yeah. not that I did, of course, no. Um, <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know it was great. And I remember uh, I'll tell you a quick story. We're doing this particular college somewhere in England. Uh, we turned up, did sound check, and this character came up to us and said, "Hi, I'm I'm running the show. My name is whatever his name was." And he said, um, "Anyway, guys, look, when you come in, on, I'll announce you." And Bob said, "No, look, I tell you what, we don't want to be announced. We don't just want to, you know, wander on peace, love, and doves, and all that stuff, you know." Yeah. And been trying to be cool, you know, which is a bit silly, really. But anyway, so he argued and said to Bob, no, I always do it. I always announce oh, the bands. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you can tell by my voice that the gig was full of Wonga, all smoking. <laughs> I went, oh, disgusting, you know, I, I just like a drink, you know. Yeah. Anyway, next thing is, he walks on, right, everyone's clapping him. Yeah. He said, ladies and gentlemen, We've been waiting ages to get this band. Ladies and gentlemen, they're here. You <laughs> forgot who we were. <laughs> it's true. 
<laughs> we, we've had that as well, John. You know, sort of. We had the one sort of thing where, as you know, in the you know, sort of playing the small places when we did, and the guy, of course, he gets up and says, "I didn't want them. I didn't want to book them." You know, so but I was forced to. But here they are. You know, it was the in-betweens then. He said, here they are. I didn't want them. But you went off my head. Here they are, the in-betweens. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it's, oh, it's great. Great days. Yeah. But, but also, oh, that's at the same time, uh, the uh, the guy, when he said, I didn't want them, he said, the best group we ever had here was Steve Brett and the Mavericks. And that was the group that Nod had left to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. You know, we were killing ourselves laughing on the side of the stage. We, could hardly, play, we could hardly play the first number through laughing. <laughs> that's great, mate. That's good fun days. I'll tell you what, though, talking about the Australian tour, I remember uh, we flying down to, I don't know, Sydney or Perth. I can't remember the first place was, but I remember touring inside Australia on ANSA Airlines. Yeah. They, uh, the publicity was, oh, these these bands have come over, these... Um, Musos, bloody English musos, mate, coming over here, you know. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ozzy. Thank you for being yeah, really yeah. welcoming. Yeah. Then what about in the back of the aircraft? You won't believe this. They thought, oh, you know, the Slade status quo, Lindisfarne, caravan. Oh, they're going to create ha havoc on the plane. We'll put four detectives on the plane. That's it. We have now, police escorts. How ridiculous! They had four detectives, right? All dressed, and, you know, all dressed up as businessmen, sitting at the back. And every time we got on the plane, we go, "Hello, guys, how are you?" All right. <laughs> yeah. We'd all sit very quietly. <laughs> and didn't get I one remember. Arrest. I rem Yeah, I remember that, John, because they thought it was going to cause havoc. You know, the the English bands. And I do remember the one time when uh, we were sitting we were on a flight, whichever wherever it was, and um, the plane had a bit of turbulence. And Fran, his drink went all over him. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he went berserk and he took his trousers, uh, took his jeans off to walk to the front of the stage to complain to complain to the captain. You know, there like, was a bit, a, bit, a bit of havoc caused then, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but I wish I could remember everything because there was so much probably did go on in hotels at gigs. And of yeah. course, you can't remember everything, you know. No. No. Well, we'll go back to... We'll do the Australian tour on a separate one, if that's all right, because we yeah. okay. for the time. Because um, that was, yeah, some of the work, whatever. Um, what did you, when you when you saw you were going to do Slade, you know, two of them, John, and obviously, as I say, they'd have the chart hits and the way they dressed and there was all that. What did you think? Because there were you and your, your denims and hair. Well... I can't remember what we thought. No, we just um, we just got on so well. It was really good fun, and we were always having a laugh. And so didn't really, you know, they were doing their thing, we were doing yeah. ours. I mean, that's probably the best yeah. way to look no, at that's it. That's right. I mean, it was brilliant. I, I saw him, and it was just brilliant. I mean, you were the support band, and you were hairy. But I went out when you when you released uh, what was it? Paper plane was it? I can't remember. I should have, I should, I should research these things, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. I went out and bought it, you know, sort of, and uh, <laughs> it was, it was brilliant. Um, it was you. you. It must have been just you bought that one copy. Well, yeah, <laughs> I've done this before. I, I, I was only blind, blind, buying Slade stuff. I've just literally had a conversation last night about this. Somebody said, uh, you "Know who you are?" And they said, yeah. and I said, "Well, I bought it. It's only because I lived over, you know, around the corner from Nod in the, the local shop." Did he, you know, didn't do that. It was just geography. They said who isn't about it. Um, do you remember one good incident? Not getting um, of charged with obscene language in Glasgow. Do we do you remember that at all? Um, vaguely, I do remember it, but um, I think the police were called in. Yeah. Yeah, the police were called in. And you know what it's like, and we sort of... Uh, we were just like uh, we were mate, we were just killing ourselves laughing really, and I think it's like Mel Bush was trying to yeah. he, he was trying to get some publicity out of it, you know that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> it was uh, I think it was because like there was like a, a, a mother's whatever in the audience, like um, I don't know, like a, I don't know whatever a mother's sort of con convention with their kids or whatever. I don't know something like that. I think that that's what kicked it all off. Ah, uh. you know. 
He was in Glasgow, so it's probably some sort of temperance thing or something, wouldn't it? You know, sort of one of those. Yeah, I think, I mean, of, of all places, Glasgow, blimey, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, how, yeah. How did you get on with the audiences, John? Do you remember? Were they all right? When? Were they okay with you? Audience for quite um, in Glasgow, you know, especially with a, with a slave, the slave audience again because they were top of the pops. They were sort of a lot of teeny, teeny boppers. Well, I don't know. I, you know, we just went play what we had to play. And got, it yeah. went down very well. Well, they did. Um, I mean, uh, it, it was. Oh, I remember. It was a great tour. I mean, there was there was no ego problems, was there, John? No. You know, we we just got on so well all the time, and um, it was that. It was just just a great fun tour, really. You know, we sort of wanted it to carry on, but uh, yeah, yeah. And he carried on like the year later when we went to Aussie together, but. Um, mm. It was yeah. a great tour. It was a it great did, tour all around. It, it did, from the outside looking, it did status quo a lot of good, though, didn't it? Sort of got your, again, got your name out there again after all the success you'd had. And a few months later, Paper Plane came out. And um, was it uh, Pile Driver? Was it Pile Driver? Yeah. 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 And you started, to me, you started um, being more recognized. Did, well, did we, um, we 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 um, did Austra after that. We did Australia quite a lot, lots of times. Then we, I think, on one tour we did Australia, New Zealand. Then I think we went to, to we did two tours of Japan, and then I think okay. we're back to Australia. But you know, it was great. And the most funniest thing in Japan, what, what we noticed when they're all sitting down, it's a, a theatre of course, they sit all sitting down. And when we finish the song, you know, da -da -da -da, you got that crescendo. And normally it's cheering and like yeah. you do, like you obviously got done as well, you know. Then, then, but in Japan it's da 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 ba. Yeah, that's it. We have the same thing. And then we, we we just went straight back into another number quickly because we thought yeah, we were quite it. <laughs> get straight back into another number. But I, I don't weird. know whether whether you had the same job, but we had the support band. It was a, a Japanese Beatles. It was the first time I'd seen a support band, right, or like a tribute band rather. But the thing was, it was John Paul George and Lingo, and I was <laughs> and I was and I, I was trying to have a serious com conversation with Lingo, and. Uh, I said, you're going to play She Robs You? Yeah, um, paperback lighter and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and a ticket to light. I thought, this, this, is going to go, this is going to go on all day, this is. Yeah. <laughs> but they weren't very good. They, they weren't that good, I, I must admit. But I mean, it was the very first time I'd ever seen a, a tribute band, but a, a Japanese band trying to do the Beatles. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd seen that. That sounds yeah. great. I mean, but a start the bass play one, even left-handed. And um, yeah, but it was just... Yeah, we got, but like you say, John, uh, when they um, when we finished the song, it was just polite applause and shoop, and then just nothing, you know, sort of thing. You know, it was, uh, you, no, you, it, was a, it was a strange did, uh, Yeah, sorry. You did the Great Western Festival as well, to separate days, didn't you? Do you remember that? Yeah, you, you oh, remember, I, John? I, that, that, was, uh, yeah. uh, uh, that was a great festival, that was. I mean, it was a great one for us because uh, we were just getting our things at the top of the pop band and we got offered off of the festival, which we did. And I think the great thing is, is that um, um, the actor Stanley Baker was one of the co-promoters, um, you know, production people on it. And uh, it was great because Nod, Nod brought him on stage, he was watching our set and, and Nod brought him on stage for the crowd to sort of, you know, give him a cheer. And Nod started doing the chant like to uh, like like in Zulu, which he was in, he'd, he'd get all the crowd to do the chant like <laughs> the natives in, in Zulu. <laughs> I mean, Stanley Baker was killing himself laughing, you know. That's been that's been great. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great for us that festival because like we were in danger of becoming that top of the pops band and. Um, and it was just a great thing. And I always remember, talking about the top of the pop situation, John, I don't, but Rick was always going, I said, don't ever get into that trap. You know, don't ever get into that trap. You know, he said, we did, and we, it took us years to get out of it, you know, sort of, um, you know, do the top of the pop thing. And, we, you know, later, well, it was so true what he said. You know, when we, when we realized later, it's like people wouldn't really, wouldn't take you seriously. Uh I mean, I remember we used to, you know, when we did uh, 
all those camera rehearsals and the makeup, and then oh, they do that makeup thing, which we didn't like, we didn't want that. Mm-hmm. Then they said, right, you know, you've got a couple of hours free now. I said, can we go upstairs? And they, yeah, do you want to go to the bar for a drink? Oh, you can only go up there with with a, a BBC personnel. That's you can't go on your... And they, they take us up there in the lift, then they just sign us in. And sort of, I mean, most nights we'd be up there after the gig, especially me, after the uh, show, we went all up the bar. The, the bar was heaving with BBC staff. They're all pissed. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we usually, I remember we used to go up and then we'd offer the, the, you know, the doorman who's, who's basically trying to stop you going in at first and just offer him a pint and it'd be great. And then you see his table <laughs> full, full, full of glasses of beer. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and um, when I, I remember that was when um, Ray Davis, we were on the show the one time with Ray Davis, and he thought H was wearing a wig, which he wasn't, right? And he actually grabbed... Uh, H's hair, Dave Hill's hair, you know, you know, it actually really hurt. He really hurt Dave. <laughs> yeah, grabbed his hair because he thought it was a wig, he was trying to pull it off, and it wasn't. And uh, and Chaz got Ray Davis by the neck up, up the wall, ready to stick one on him. Who's going to stick one on him? Because <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you remember, I mean, Chaz was pretty big, you know, pretty tall. And if it, it, it actually frightened Ray Davis, you know, when he got when he got him when he got hold of him. But uh, now there's some good good things up there at the top of the pops after the, after the show. But like I said, you have to be signed in or blah blah blah. You have to yeah. try and blag your way in, sort of thing. And then you just just offer the, offer the door with a pint, and then you know you have no problems. No we problems used to drink there. up. We used to drink up there with pants people and all people like that. Actually, they'd, all, they'd all be up there, right? Yeah, Everybody it was good fun. There. Was yeah, that the same in the six? Was that the same in the sixties as well? I mean, I know it wasn't pants people, but was, was a bar in this when you were doing the top well, of the sixties? I was. I, well, John, John would have been there. The so John, it was, it was, it was yeah, sixty eight. Yeah, nineteen sixty eight was pictures of matchstick men. Yeah. And that's when we had all those frilly shirts and jackets <laughs> and all that stuff. But the first sub of parts was Manchester, and yeah. that's where it was at first. And I remember talking to some. Oh, I was doing an interview. With some guy, was it uh, two years ago? I can't remember who it was now, but he said, "Do you remember your first um, top of the box, John?" I said, "Yeah, it was Manchester." He said, "It's oh really?" I said, "Yeah, it was um, in Manchester. I remember it. I can still picture the place. It was a bit of doom and gloom, and it was on look. It was on a bomb site." He said, "Oh, I know it well." He said, "That's where I live." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, it was, it was it, that was like before for our time. That was John, and um, our first top of the pops was seventy one. That was when it was done at Shepherd's Bush. Then you know the That's B- right. TV, the BBC TV centre at Shepherd's Bush. When when the, the same again, the women, the men on the gate were trying to stop you going in. I said, "Well, we're doing top of the pops, you know." Then they had to check, you know, got the phone and call through to you know the main part, you know, like yeah. I. It was just a, it was just a power thing these guys had, you know. But um, yeah, and they all thought because you know this is quite wrong, but they all think because you're a band, you're in a band, yeah, yeah. you're going to cause mayhem. Oh well, yeah, okay, but yeah, but I mean there are times when you know we were, we had to do top of the pops in say a couple of hours, go to the bar for a drink, go and have something to eat. You know we want to get probably outrageous after it, you know, yeah. they would get on with their job and just go and do it. it. I mean, I reckon this is why when you see Rod Stewart or the faces were on top of the box, I remember Rod and the band miming, you know, doing your gig and kicking the football around and playing football on the stage, you know, it was great. The good on you guys. <laughs> probably the producer, the producer sitting in his room going mad, you know. I remember the same thing, John, you said about, because the, you know, the dressing rooms downstairs, there's all the long corridors of dressing rooms downstairs, Chris, and the yeah. faces were playing football in the corridor, you know, yeah. sort of, uh, kicking the ball, and nobody could walk, and had to get smacked in the head with the football. <laughs> but they were, like, they were playing football in the corridor, in the dressing room corridors downstairs. Mm. Are there any little blokes though? So. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember on the one top of the pops, um, they had a swap around. Um, 
Kenny Jones was because it was all mime, all playback. Kenny Jones was playing guitar. I think it was Ian McLaglan was on the drums, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Oh, and we tried it once. I mean, we tried it once, and they really told us off. <laughs> they really told us off. You know, but, this yeah, is a serious mean, show. It's not meant to be a joke. You the know? famous one, obviously, way in advance of 72, is Margarita Time with Jim on bass. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, Do you remember that, John? Because I didn't Alan, play on that. Alan, Alan was in Australia then, and... Um, yeah. No, it wasn't Marguerite. No, it wasn't Marguerite. Wasn't Marguerite. Sorry, I did. sorry about that. No, I did. no, because I didn't play on that. It's the, it's the it's the one on top of the pops where Jim is playing, is substituting. Jim, Jim, Jim's um, on bass, and, and then Rick Rick falls all over your. He falls into John. John. Oh yeah. But I know it wasn't. It wasn't you then, John. It was the other. There was the guy. It was, who, it, yeah. yeah. It was the guy. Who, it was the guy who used to play for Honey Bus, Pete Kircher. That's it. That's it. It was peak. That's right. It was that time down. And Rick sort of. I'm going to write this down. The kids. Must do more research. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. Ignore now. that because... question, John. So my apologies. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I did. I remember doing a gig um, before the lockdown. It was um, in my band, JCQ. It was funny. We'd finished playing. This woman came up and said, That was great, John. The band's great, just like the real thing. I said, Well, it is the real thing, really. But, and she mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm annoyed, though. I said, why, why are you annoyed? She said, Well, I was, I was expecting you to announce Francis Rossi to walk on stage. <laughs> I said, Hey, why? You know, he's not interested. We're not interested. He wouldn't do it. And we didn't want him to do it. We have no need for him to do it. In, in mm -hmm. respects, you know, and she's just stormed off this woman and really pissed off that she, it, you know, she didn't see him walk on stage. I mean, hang on, it's not uh, status yeah, quo. Oh, it's, God, it's you know. Way, it's amazing the way these people think, though, in it, John. Yeah. Just, well, that, got, and, and there's no way you could sort of talk them around from it, you know. They think they're right, and that's it. And there's no well, way guy, to get around there's it. There's a guy, a guy years ago after we played, and I was still with the band. And he said, "Oh, that was a great show. I enjoyed that, mate." He said, um, "Can I have an autograph?" I said, "Yeah." I started chatting to him. I said, "What numbers you like?" He said, "All, all the songs he liked." Then he said, "It was really good, Al, Alan." <laughs> and I said, I said, I thought you said you'd seen the show. He said, I did. But I said, well, if you've been seeing the show, you would have noticed that I was on the drums in the middle of the stage at the back playing drums, and Alan was um, stage left playing bass and doing vocals. Anyway, but so I'm signing this thing, right? Uh, well, I say you're about to sign it. And I said, look, uh, I'm John Coglin, right? No, you're Alan. Do you know what I did, Don, to get rid of him? I just signed Alan Lancaster. I know. You, you can't tell them, can you? you? You can't tell them. It's amazing, Chris, but these people, they've got something in their head. Well, and I, I, I had, had a conversation. And there's no way you can sway them. No. I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago who was telling me how good Jim was when, he, yeah. when they came and saw him before lockdown. There was you, Dave, and Jim. Yeah. Um, yeah. The fact that they were 30 years out of date didn't mean yeah. anything, but you know, <laughs> they were convinced you they could. You can't, argue, you can't argue with them. No. Well, there's yeah. another one. We did it. We did a gig in, um, uh, okay, Norfolk yeah. with my band. We'd done a sound check, walked across the road, and it's a big square, big market square. It goes to the hotel. There's a guy sitting outside drinking a beer, big, big beer, loads of barnet. And he, he said, Hello, John, how are you? I said, fine, thank you. And he said, uh, I know a friend of yours. I said, who's that then? Oh, it's Bob Young. <laughs> I said, Bob Young? No, Bob Young. <laughs> he said, I'm a friend of his. And I thought, yeah, like, like you are. Yeah, you're sure you are. And this guy went on and on and on, talking about things. I said, no, Bob's on money to play. Right, you know, he's our road. He was then to him. And then... Um, he said, um, oh, are you Bob Young? <laughs> <laughs> Me! <laughs> you, I know, it, it's amazing, isn't it? And you don't, half the time, you don't know how to get out of it. No, that's you, right. Yeah. And you I said, well, that's what I said. It, Chris, it's weird, it is. Yeah. I said well, to him, you... Don, I said, I said, are you coming to the gig? I said, it's only across the road there. Oh, no, I'm not going to gig tonight. I've been sitting here drinking. I thought, oh, God. 
everybody convinces weird. themselves that like, everybody convinces themselves and things and certain things. I had a guy because I do the research for Don's gigs, and I had a guy I spoke to convinced that, that the in betweens had done this competition at a school, and his band had won. 1965, this is. Yeah. So for nearly 50 plus years, he'd gone around telling all his mates and his family that he'd won. He'd beaten the in-betweens who became Slade. He was the best band. And I, I made him cry by showing him the actual results. Yeah. And they hadn't won. But for 55 years, he convinced himself that he'd won. And he just crying. It was so fun. But people do. And it's, but it's, it's good it's stuff. It's like the same kind of thing, Joel, with what you were just saying, Joe. I had a guy come up to me once saying, you know, you're, you're the drummer of the sled. Yeah, yeah, I'm with the band. Yeah, well, I think you're crap. <laughs> and that, that you say to your face I mean there's no sort of I mean everybody else I'll, give, you know, I'll punch them or something like it's amazing you know so I'll, I'll yeah. it's, incredible. it's incredible but we've got a couple of minutes left so we'll bring you to our you're, you're gigging at the weekend aren't you John up, up, the, up in the middle yeah we're doing this um, is it Worcester yeah it's, it's in Redditch, it's, Redditch. In, it's in Redditch and it's um, a gig for the charity of John Bonham so, oh, well, I was asked to do that, but I couldn't get there. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm there, was, um, trouble, there, was, there was lots of um, disorganisation. Uh, and you wouldn't believe this. I had about another three bands on, which this agent I know has pulled them out. Because what oh, we're yeah. doing, they, they set up, you got each band's got 15 minutes to change over. That's <laughs> not long enough for anybody. No. You couldn't even I know they've done the it. They changed it. It's actually Clearwater, uh, another band, and then my band. We, I think we're on at half ten. I so I can't remember now. But you know, you think well, most people can organise these things properly, and it, it just but too many bands on a short space of time, basically. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, if people, I'll, I'll do the official. If people go to your site, they'll see the dates and the times, and they'll see all your other gigs as well. I'll put a, I'll put a link onto. Your side, yeah. John. Um, so people Cheers. can look and we'll do it. I'll call it a halt to this. We'll have the little lady saying we've finished recording, and it'll give us about five minutes to say you can tell me that I did rubbish research or something like that. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very That's much, John. Good. Much good. appreciated. No problem. So if you okay.